Hey everyone, I'm Mike Caputo, and today we're looking at the much anticipated Keychron Q1 Pro. Now, Keychron has been in the game for about six years, and they're releasing a follow up to the Q1, which is supposed to deliver even more refined typing experience. At least that is what they say. So, in today's video, we're going to look at the typing experience, the build quality, everything in between to figure out whether or not the Keychron Q1 Pro delivers on that promise. So, whether you are new to mechanical keyboards or you're a mechanical keyboard aficionado, I got something for you. So, let's get started. Now, just so you and I are on the same page, this video is not sponsored by Keychron. They did not send this keyboard out to me. They did not pay for any type of advertising. I bought this keyboard of my own accord and through their Kickstarter campaign, which happened earlier in the year. Now let's talk about the features. Starting with pricing, this might be one of the best value keyboards in the world of pre-built mechanical keyboards coming in at $199, fully built with keycaps and switches. And unlike the Q1, it works with both wired and wirelessly, connecting up to three devices using Bluetooth and it comes with an internal 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which, hey, listen, that's a pretty big size battery. We'll talk about the usage in just a few minutes. Additionally, the Q1 Pro comes with one of my favorite features, which is the rotary knob that is not only tactile, but it's also depressible. Out of the box, the Q1 Pro comes configured to work with Mac OS, and this button itself will allow you to change the volume up or down. The keyboard is made from 6063 aluminum that has CNC machined, polished, anodized, and sandblasted to create a premium look and feel, especially when you consider the price point of $199 for this pre-built. It weighs just over 3.8 pounds or 1.7 kilograms, and it's so heavy it's not going to slide around your desk because of the rubber footies that are on the bottom of the keyboard. Now, a portion of that weight is attributed to the upper and lower aluminum housing that is used but also a portion of that weight is gonna come from the several layers of sound dampening foam, the PCB, the switches, that all result in kind of a very pleasing auditory experience that I think you're gonna enjoy. Minus the space bar, but more on that in just a few minutes. The Q1 Pro is available either in an ANSI or an ISO layout, and it can be purchased either bare bones or fully built. And the bare bones version, it's worth noting, is $20 cheaper, coming in at $179. Now there are three different colors available. There's a color that I have, which is shell white. There's also carbon black and silver gray, which I think carbon black may be the second runner up, but the shell white for sure is the winner for me. Let me know what your favorite color is down in the comments below. Now the Q1 Pro is RGB illuminated and those RGBs are south facing, which means they face me. So if I'm the user, I get a very pleasing experience looking at the keyboard, either from close or at a distance. Now you can configure the RGB lighting modes by pressing function plus the Q button and you can further change the hue, saturation, and brightness, and even the speed of the RGBs. Now, I like to keep my RGB lights on, which is why I use a coiled aviator cable from Space Cables, which is used to power and transfer data. Now, if coil cables aren't your thing, the keyboard does come with a USB-C straight through cable that's gonna be color matched. It is braided as well, so it is very high quality. And additionally, there is a USB-C to USB-A dongle that is available in case you wanna plug it into your computer. Now, in terms of keycaps, the keycaps are KSA profile, which means that they're much taller than most OEM or even Cherry keycaps. And from my experience, it's gonna take some getting used to because they're especially troublesome to type on if you're coming from a low profile keyboard. That is because the KSA profile are their spherical in design and it just takes a little bit more to get used to. You're certainly gonna have errors when you're typing if you have not typed on KSA profiles before. Overall, I find the design and the aesthetics of this keyboard very appealing. It does give me that 1980s retro vibe. It almost reminds me of an Apple IIe keyboard, which just reminds me of being a kid. Now, along that same retro vibe, you can choose from three different hot swappable switches that all offer a unique typing experience. I ended up going with the Keychron Banana Switches as I wanted an experience that was closest to the Baby Kangaroos from Gateron. For the most part, I like the way that the Q1 Pro sounds out of the box with the Banana Switches, minus the space bar. The space bar is a little bit too pingy for my own personal preference, and I thought maybe it'd get a little bit better if I changed out the bananas for the baby kangaroo in the space bar specifically. Let's hear that one. Now that's better, but it's just not quite there yet. Still sounding, I think, a little bit pingy. So I swapped out the stock space bar for the ghost bar from Nufi. Now 
Now that is more like it. Now, depending on your personal preference, you may or may not like the amount of flex that is in the board when you are typing down because of the way that the keyboard is designed with the double gaskets. You certainly get a lot of flex in it. And if you look while I'm typing, you can see that the board is flexing while typing. Now, it wasn't too bothersome for me and seeing that it is my first Keychron keyboard, I don't necessarily have a good basis of comparison, but if you own another Keychron keyboard and you're experiencing this, let me know what you think. I, again, I don't necessarily mind. It's not bothersome where I would wanna return the keyboard. You can further customize the keyboard and the software on the keyboard using the QMK VIA software that is available to browser-based. Really, you open a Brave or Chrome, you plug in the keyboard into your computer and you authenticate your keyboard and really you're up and running in just a matter of a few minutes. You can customize anything from the key bindings, the RGB, the lighting, uh, you can test the keys, you can reset the keyboard. It's very self-explanatory and it's actually think of a valuable software if you wanted to change any of those things. You can even add macros to the keyboard as well. Now, in terms of pros and cons, there's really no perfect keyboard out there. There's no end game because no keyboard is perfect. And that means that there's gonna be something wrong or something that you might not like about it. And here are the things that I would consider when looking for a keyboard at this price point. At 199, this keyboard, I would say it's somewhat accessible where people can enter into the mechanical keyboard realm and get familiar with a keyboard that has high build quality, got great aesthetics, and I would say it's you know very customizable. Second, I would say this is keyboard is nice because it has global pickability because it's available in an ANSI and an ISO layout, and you can buy it either in bare bones or fully configured for 179 and 199 respectively. That means that whether you are someone who is familiar with mechanical keyboards or you are brand new to it, you can find a keyboard and find a configuration that should suit your needs. It does have the ability to customize the keys and the software using either the QMK or the VIA software, which I think is often overlooked for some keyboard manufacturers because the Mac is usually left out for some reason, I don't know why. But on the flip side, there are some cons that you probably should consider. One battery life goes from 300 hours when you are using it with no RGBs on to about 90 hours when you are using with RGBs on. And that battery life I would say is probably less than stellar. So you really have to, you know, if you like the RGBs, you really have to consider either A, using it plugged in, or B, having to charge it all the time, which might be a pain in the butt depending on what your setup is. Second thing is that there's no wireless dongle to use with this. There's only Bluetooth and wired connectivity, no dongle that may or may not work for you depending on your computer configuration itself, including the keycap profile, which I think is gonna be a turnoff for a lot of people once they pick it up, because it is gonna be a very different typing experience, you know, depending on what you're coming from. The space bar, as I illustrated, is super pingy and does require some level of, I say finessing to get it to sound decent. And then third and finally, that the lower part of the keyboard, the lower housing, you can't actually adjust it. There are no kickstands to raise it up any more than what it is from the footies that are on the bottom. Overall, I really like the look and feel of the Q1 Pro. I like the typing experience minus the space bar, which we talked about. Uh, I do think that from, you know, personally speaking, after using this keyboard for about two weeks, I do like the 75% layout. I do think that the directional keys are much more better placed than other keyboards that I've used in the past. They're not necessarily as compact and feeling as tight or as maybe claustrophobic, if that's the way of thinking about it. But I do think that this is probably a good keyboard for other people to check out, at least to look at and use this as a basis of comparison. I wanna know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below. Now I do have a playlist here for other keyboards that are in the sub $200 range. Click on that if you wanna see other videos. My name is Mike and I will talk to you in the next one.